Hey guys, welcome to Indie Game Hustle. My name is Charles, and in this video, we're going to continue with our series and setting up a base scene. Basically, I do a base scene um, in most of my projects where um, I just kind of get like a like a starter point, right? Um, I know things are going to change and, and all of that, but I usually like to get a starter point scene. So this scene that we're currently looking at is kind of their sample scene. And so what I'm going to simply do is go into my assets folder and I'm going to go into project robot boy and then I'm going to go into world I'm going to go into levels and then I'm going to right click create scene okay and then I'm just going to call it underscore base okay and so all I did was created a, a new scene I'm not in that scene yet uh, once I double click it so I'm just going to go ahead and double click it uh, I'm not going to save anything here. I'm just going to go s don't save. And now we're in a scene with nothing other than a main camera and a directional light. This is as about as basic as you get, right? And so usually what I want to do is set up a few, th a few different things. So uh, the first thing I want to do is kind of establish post-processing. Uh, so I'm going to show you how that kind of works. Um, and it's actually pretty easy uh, in URP. Um, it's pretty nice. So all you have to do um, in your scene, head over to your hierarchy and right click. And if you go down to where it says volume, you just click on global volume. Now there's other options here and um, I can, we're going to play with these probably in the future once we actually have like a character running around in an environment. But for now, we're just going to set up a, a basic global volume. This is going to be uh, basically post-processing applied to everything in the scene. Okay. All right. Great. So now we have a global volume there. I'm going to just change the position uh, to zero and zero there. All right. Great. And so there's not going to be anything physical there, uh, you know, in terms of an icon, or I don't think anyway there. But the first thing I want to do is head over to the inspector and on the right side, you have your, I guess, a component here. In this component, you can change it to local, to global. We're going to leave it at global. Um, we're going to leave this at one and priority at zero. What we need to do now is create a profile for this. Okay. All right. So what we're going to do is hit new. Now, if I hit this here and I look, this is the sample scene profile that we were just in. So this is the pro, pro the pro processing effects that apply to that scene, but we don't want to use that. We want our own uh, pro, uh, processing effects. And generally speaking, you can, you can create different profiles for different levels based on the mood that you're trying to set and that sort of thing. Right? So let's just create our base, uh, profile here. So I'm going to close this. I'm going to hit new. And when you hit new, it's going to create a global volume profile for you. Now, when I click this, it's going to take me to where it's located and it put it right inside of the base. Uh, let's see here. So it created a folder called base and then it created and put in the global profile and we can leave this just like this and that's fine. Um, you could rename it if you want. Um, but for now, I think, uh, I'll leave it just like that, just to, you know, that we know where it's at. Okay. All right, great. So let's go ahead and click on this here and let's take a look here. So underneath this, it's going to have add override. Now, what this is going to do is give us the ability to add post-processing. So we're going to click post-processing. And so now we can add some additional things. So say we want to do bloom. We do bloom and now we're adding bloom to our scene. Um, there's not much in here uh, to bloom, but let me go ahead and put a cube and some objects in it first. Okay. All right. All right. So we have a cube here and I'm going to go ahead and hide this uh, the sun or a directional light. And, and if you're not familiar with using these, but I use these a lot now, I'm so happy they, that, uh, unity added this. So this one here allows you to not, when you click on this next to the object, you can't click on it in the scene anymore. So that's good. If you're kind of have, a, if you have a really busy scene, this is very useful. 
Um, so now that sun can't be clicked on. So no matter what, you'll be clicking on the object below it. But if you're just not using an object in the scene, or it's usually like these types of things, you don't need to see them. You can just hit that. It's still there. You just don't physically see it in the scene. Um, and that keeps it clean. So for instance, if we don't want to know where the camera's at, and that's not really important right now, we can just go ahead and click this, click that, and it's gone. But it's still there, right? All right, cool. All right, so let's take a look at our global volume here. All right, so we have our global volume here and it's there. We're going to go ahead and start adding some things here. So the next thing, let's look at maybe tone mapping. And we're going to change maybe the tone mapping mode to something like neutral or ACES. And that adds something. And as you can see, now our scene is starting to show that it's being affected by our uh, post processing. And that's good. And for now, this is this is fine, you know, for what we have. Um, uh, we're, we're just trying to evaluate that we just basically say, hey, we have some post processing in the scene and it's working. Right. So um, this is great. All right. Uh, let's see here. What else do we want to add? Maybe we want to add a vignette. Vignettes are cool. You can click where it says all and it'll click all. And you can change the intensity of this or just smoothness, that sort of thing, um, whatever you prefer. Um, I like to add a little bit of vignette to things. And um, and I'll just go with something like this just to add that there. And that looks OK. That's fine. Uh, nothing special. And this is all about what you want to do. Uh, you can put whatever value you prefer. Right. Um, something else. I don't want to click this anymore. Uh, I don't want to accidentally click it I guess uh, the next thing that we can do is uh, let's see what else they got there's so many different things here though um, uh, I think ambient occlusion is not in this list I think that's in the high definition HDR uh, render pipeline um, so you would have to use the HDR that's fine I do believe I heard in someone else's video that they would be adding that eventually to URP I'd imagine they would so um, but for now they don't have at least right now it doesn't seem like they have like an ambient thing but that's okay we don't need that to uh, do this project all right so there's lots of other things and we'll play with these things as we start to go into more like making things look better but right now it's not about that we're just thinking about the functionality and just making sure things are working um, so, but now that you have this set up and you understand how to do it, it's there. Now, if you go to your main camera and if you look at your game, what we want to do is go where it says rendering, where it says post processing, click that. And that's going to allow it to show up in game. You see, so now you, it'll be able to show in your game there. So you want to make sure that's there and below that. What we want to do is uh, select one of these uh, anti-aliasing uh, options. So uh, I'm not sure what these all mean in detail. We have to look that up. But I typically end up picking this one and setting it at high. Um, and that's pretty much it for that. So uh, that's pretty much it for the post-processing effects. Um, it's really easy to add now. Um, and I really do like that uh, feature of uh of unity doing that um it's really great now in terms of the skybox uh there's not much to change right now um this is a default skybox that just comes with it it's fine for now i typically don't use default skyboxes in pretty much anything uh, there's nothing wrong with them they look great but um for now what i could do is just remove it you know uh, you can change it if you want you can change it to something like this Maybe that's better. Uh, that's on personal preference, right? So I'm going to set it to none for now. Uh, and sun source, there's, you know, you can set as a directional light for your sun source. I don't know if that's making any difference, but uh, we'll just leave that like that. Um, and let's see. And if you look at the mixed lighting area, uh, we'll learn about some of this as we go along. But for now, I'm just going to make sure that this is on subtractive. 
because uh, that's kind of what the other scene was on, and I think that's how it's working with URP. I could be wrong, but uh, again, we'll we'll learn these things as we go, and let's see what else we can mess with. Uh, I don't want to mess with too much graphical stuff yet because it's just not about that just at this time. But we can add fog if we want to do that. Um, but that is completely fine for now. All right, and so let's take a look at the main camera and let's see if there's anything here that we want to play with. Um, we already got rid of the skybox, but if you want to change the background type of the actual scene, so right now this has got this blue, I'm not a fan of that blue, you can go to environment, background type, change it to solid color, and now we can actually change it to something uh, maybe more representative of maybe the environment that you're working in. So, uh, I don't know, something like, uh, typically, is that, that could be too dark, but uh, the point is you can use it, it can be something like this. You can just kind of sample it, maybe. And so, look maybe closer, like that. Uh, let's see, maybe something like that. That's fine, whatever. The point is, is that you can change this as needed um, but the truth of the matter is we're going to change that back to skybox once we uh, get a skybox and, and, and going. So, But this is just for the base scene, just to get, get us started here. All right. All right, I think that's pretty much it. I'll go ahead and get this cube out of here and delete that. I'll open up uh, Pro Builder, go to Tools, and I'll head over to Pro Builder and open a Pro Builder window and put in a new shape. And... Uh, there's one thing I am going to change immediately is the directional light color. Uh, for now, I'm just going to go ahead and move that to pure white so I get that there. All right, that looks great. All right, perfect. And uh, I'll put that box right on to zero. Zero that out. And that's great. And yeah, uh, we'll probably be using uh, Pro Builder uh, for a little bit. And then we'll sh switch over to another 3D modeling program called U-Modeler, uh, and uh, that program is very similar to ProBuilder. It has a few different tools that could aid us in making some, um, some in-editor assets to make our life a little easier. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. For the next set of videos, I'll be releasing one every day at 10 a.m. Eastern Time. So to stay up to date on the latest 3D platforming tutorial, feel free to subscribe to the channel. If you'd like to support, you can find me on Patreon, or of course, you can hit me up on Discord. I like to talk about whatever project you guys are working on. Of course, thanks for hanging with me. Your support is always appreciated. As always, remember, never give up and keep moving forward. Peace.